station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. KGO TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KGO TV. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, we, we wanted to talk to you today about taking pictures in space. We have all these wonderful photographs from you guys, and we want to know, uh, what, what do you most enjoy taking pictures of? Okay. I think all of us can agree that uh, taking pictures of the Earth is uh, the most enjoyable. Uh, every time we look down, there's, it's different. The, the lighting is different. The clouds are different. Uh, so even though we pass over the same place several times, uh, it, it just always looks a little different. And for me, that is definitely the most fun thing to take pictures of. Now, that looks like a very heavy camera, but I would imagine it's not so heavy in microgravity. Wow, that's uh, part of the beauty of it is that you can maneuver uh, a gun like this and uh, be very comfortable uh, moving it around and point a different direction without any fatigue. So it's, uh, it's actually really nice. It's kind of like this microphone. I can let it go and, uh, and it stays there and, uh, and then you can maneuver it wherever you need to be. How much time do you guys have to take pictures up there and what sort of gear are you using? Is this a camera that I could go buy at a camera store? Well, um, I think you have to ask your employer that to make sure before you head off to that, that to buy this expensive camera. I think they're pretty pricey, but you certainly can. That's uh, they're uh, commercially available products that that uh, that we're using, and um, it's 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 really it's really pretty con convenient to have such a selection that we, that we have. We have a wall of lenses and different camera bodies that we can use at any given time. And it's usually in the evenings that we have personal time to take pictures, but during the day, um, there are certain, event, certain locations that are scheduled into our day that we, uh, that we try to get pictures of um, every workday. When you're taking pictures, is it kind of like taking travel photos? Is it kind of like you're on a trip and you're taking pictures out the window of the car? Or, I mean, are there certain things that you're, that you're able to see from the space station that you're just dying to get a shot of when they happen? Yeah, well, it, a lot of times, in fact, our, um, one of our exercise pieces of exercise equipment is right, right in, above or below the cupola, depending how you're looking at it. And uh, a lot of times when I'm working out, I'll look up and, and uh, oh, man, I got to go get a picture of something just as beautiful. And, and so in that way, it's very similar to vacation when you're, when you're uh, traveling and you just have to stop. You see some beautiful view that you want to take a picture of. And so it's very similar in that way. Uh, I mean, how much does the scenery out the window change? How, how does Earth fill the window? Are you always seeing different weather systems and different events? Does it make you feel like you're close to home? Yeah, we we never get tired looking out the window, and it's something that we talk among ourselves. Uh, it's it's amazing how uh, even though the orbit uh, sooner or later will will uh, let us pass again over some place that we've already been. Uh, it, the, the Earth is always perfect and always different. Uh, it's constantly changing. The, you never look outside and see something uh, that you've seen before that is not uh, somehow different. The lighting, the angle, uh, the cloud cover, uh, the sun glint. So it, you, you can never possibly get tired of looking out the window and, and discovering new things. It's, it's, uh, that's just the beauty of this, uh, this amazing sight, this amazing sight that we have. Now, personally, my, my favorite way to look out the, to look uh, down on earth is when I when I was outside using this camera and I think Chris would agree with that that it's that nothing can really beat that so you have three different cameras there there's one with looks like a very wide lens one with a long one and then that special one that's made for for going on spacewalks yeah that's that's exactly right um, we're a little bit tricking you with this white one it's really the same camera body with with um, thermal blanket material over the top of it and uh, and we can put whichever type of lens we we prefer for that particular spacewalk um, 
And then the camera bodies are the same on these two, just with different lenses. And then we use some unique lenses for inside um, shots when uh, we want to get a little wider perspective on a in a narrow space, and uh, and then the, obviously the longer lens here for t really trying to to zero in on on uh, a particular city or our hometown or pl so, uh, anything of interest that we're trying to shoot outside. And now I, I've seen you guys take some some selfies, so to speak, some self portraits, some trick photos. What what what, what stuff do you do with the cameras when you're off duty there on the space station? Well, I think every every crew of every expedition tries to tries to come up with something that um, can somehow identify them. And uh, that I think that something that's very peculiar about our crew is that he's one of the youngest crew overall uh, that has been on the station. I, I'm I'm 36 years old, and and my uh, crew members are only slightly older than I am. So we we like to send down pictures to the ground, uh, to the people that work with us uh, every day, uh, to let them know that we think of them and, and that we are having fun. And even when things get um, uh, hard and, and it's a long day, we still like to take uh, funny pictures that uh, where we all, we're all smiling or we're having a, in, in some funny position or something funny happen. And, and we like to, uh, to take a shot of that and let people know that, that, that we're having fun and it's, that this is a great place to work and that we're grateful for what, we, for what they do with us. Is it fun? Is it especially fun to be in microgravity? Are there things you can do there to, to take cool pictures that you couldn't do otherwise? Actually, uh, yeah, one of the one of the coolest things. <laughs> well, yeah, you can be Superman. You can, but also playing with other objects that. Um, Playing with refraction um, of light and water, I'm sure you've seen those pictures where you get a bubble of water in front of you, and of course, in the water, because of refraction, your face is upside down, and you just can't do that anywhere else. This is the only place that that's possible. So things like that really make it fun. Now, I wanted to talk real briefly about that spacewalk, and I know, Luca, you, were, you had some tense moments there. Do you, can you guys talk a little bit about what happened there? Um, yeah, um, for I think that for a couple of minutes there, um, maybe more than a couple of minutes, I experienced uh, what it's like to be a goldfish in a fishbowl from the point of view of the of the goldfish. Uh, so, about half an hour into the EVA, 45 minutes maybe, uh, Chris and I were were ahead on our task, so uh, we were starting our our third task, and uh, I felt some water on the back of my head. And I realized that it was cold water. It it it, it was a it was not a normal feeling. So I, I I told ground. Chris came came by to to give it to give it a look. He couldn't see anything. He took some pictures of it, but it wasn't until a couple of minutes later that we actually saw the water trickling in the front of the helmet, and then I felt it covering my ears. And uh, at that point, we called the terminate for the EVA. I started going back to the airlock, and. Uh, um, the water kept trickling until it completely covered my eyes and my nose. Um, it was really hard to see. I, I couldn't hear anything. It was really hard to communicate. Uh, I, just, I went back using just, uh, um, uh, just memory, basically going back to the airlock until, until I found it. And then uh, went inside, and uh, Chris was there in, in, in split seconds to uh, come inside, close the, close the airlock, and uh, repressurize. Karen was already there, ready to repressurize. Our Russian colleagues uh, were all there to help, and they, as soon as the, uh, as the two compartments were equalized, uh, they doffed, uh, meaning they took off my helmet, uh, wiped my face from all the water, about uh, three, po three pounds of water, I would say, and, uh, and that was the end of it. Um, for me, the worst part, uh, as, as um, Chris mentioned, I was I was miserable, but okay. Uh, it's just ima imagine walking around with your eyes closed in a fishbowl. Really, that that that's what was going on at the at the at the, pom at the mo moment. It's just a very uncomfortable feeling to to be with your uh, with your face underwater for all the, uh, for all that time. Uh, but the reaction of the crew was outstanding. I think the crew on the ground and the crew on board. Uh, Chris really supported me, and I was just uh, lucky to uh, to be back inside in no time. All right, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your time, and uh, and greetings from Earth.
Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the, w the KGO TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WDAY TV. Station, this is WDAY TV Fargo. Do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Thanks, Karen. Uh, just to begin with, the, uh, the the picture you took of Minnesota yesterday and, and tweeted, Karen, is really going crazy on Facebook and, and, and being retweeted. What was that like? Because I know a couple years ago, or on the shuttle flight, you tried taking that picture, and I think it was cloudy. So what was that like to actually see Minnesota from that perspective? It was fantastic. I actually have to thank Chris for that. He knew that I'd been waiting every <laughs> I've been, uh, you know, trying to look at the our world map program that shows when we're going to cross over various places and, and try and time it. And I go to the window and it's cloudy again. And that's how it was on my shuttle flight when I had a chance to look two or three times. And then finally I was uh, doing a task and I get a call over intercom. Karen, come. The <laughs> it's clear over Minnesota. And so I uh, hightailed it down to the cupola and uh, got a camera out and got some pictures. It was pretty neat. It's amazing. I, I think a lot of people didn't expect that you could actually pick out the lakes, um, you know, the Otter Tail Lakes, the West Battle, East Battle. Were you surprised that it was that much clarity? I really didn't know what to expect, but I, I was going to look for Otter Tail Lake first because that, I think, in that area is the easiest to pick out, and it was very easy to find it. And then I knew that uh, East Battle Lake was going to be nearby. And so, yeah, it was, it was very easy to find all of that with the naked eye. And, and Luca, you've been tweeting a lot of pictures, too, and I think you and Karen especially are, are finding it when there's big peninsulas and, uh, or, or Sicily or something like that, that that's really fun to to take a picture of because people back here on Earth can kind of relate and, and pick out. Is that some of the things you kind of look at and look for? Well, I am from Sicily, and Italy and the Italian peninsula is probably one of the easiest spots uh, to, to, to find on, on Earth on any, any time, even at night, just the shape is so recognizable. Uh, already, if, if somebody asked me to take a specific picture in Central Europe, it would be a lot harder to find. And as a matter of fact, we have had some, some trouble picking specific cities and capitals uh, over Europe. Um, and, and, it's, and it's true also for Central United States and, and, and the central regions of, of Asia. Uh, we like the coastlines because they, they, mark, they are very easy to recognize. We, we can follow a coastline and find specific landmarks. So it, it is a lot of fun, especially for somebody like me that comes from, from Italy and uh, for the south of Italy. It's a lot of fun to identify spots and take a picture and then send it down for people to, to, see, what, what we're do, to see what we're doing and kind of get them curious uh, that, that we are up here and we, that we are flying over them. They need to realize that we do that, that on our spare time. So we get a lot of requests, please take a picture of this town, this place. It's really hard to do that because we cannot guarantee that we will be over a specific place at a specific time to make a picture. Sure. And Karen, I'm sure you're able to share pictures with uh, family back home and and I know you communi communicate with your husband and son are are they communicating with uh your son's artwork back up in space are you trading Yeah, it's kind of nice. I get uh pictures of him and some of the art he's done and then I send down pictures and videos to to uh to him and my husband. Um we've had some great we have had great communication. Luca, um, and I was listening to the interview uh, prior to mine, and I was just going to ask, in the last 12, 18 hours, have they been able to pin down any more on, on, on where that water came from, or is that still out there? We have been doing some troubleshooting, uh, Chris and I, on, on my suit and, and trying to uh, find, uh, um, find what the, the source could be. At, at the, at this specific moment, we know where it, where it did not come from. We know it didn't come from the water bag that, that we used to drink, and we know it didn't come from my, uh, from my LCBG, the liquid cooling garment that we wear under the suit. Uh, but NASA, the, and the NASA specialists and the engineers are still working really hard uh, to, to find out exactly what happened, and I'm sure that they will find uh, both the problem and the solution. And Chris, that certainly was a team effort. I know Karen was there as well. Um, that's one of those things that's not in the binder that you guys are always looking at, um, 
Can you just describe what those few minutes were like? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, before every spacewalk or every major task that we do um, with robotics, for example, or spacewalks, we have a brief, and together as a crew, we talk about what we're going to do and that we're, what we will do if there's a problem. And we did the same thing the day before yesterday, and we talked about a few different uh, issues, but lo and behold, what happened was not one of those items that we discussed. And and it was just through training and understanding about what's inside the suit, how the suit works, and how it could propagate to a bigger problem, which it did, and uh, and then communicating with the ground how, when to end it. And in my own gut feeling, I could, I knew it was time to end it when I saw the water creeping around his communications cap kind of right by his eyelid, and, uh, and I knew that was a significant amount of water to be in a helmet, uh, and it was time to go in. And, uh, and that all happened, just like you said, it was just a few moments. It was maybe four to six minutes um, it, that we were discussing it and sitting outside, and quickly the plan developed. And, and uh, as all accidents, or incidents, excuse me, happen, it's right when the sun was setting and right uh, as it made things harder. So all those things sort of came together um, at the perfect storm, if you so to speak, um, for, for us to deal with. Well, guys, I really appreciate it. You have a, a great rest of the week. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, KGO-TV and WDA-TV station. We are now resuming operational audio comm. And Chris, uh, we are ready for your private conference. Uh, we'll be dialing SSC-15 unless you prefer a different one. <laughs> 